and welcome to part two of the order block strategy. Now, order blocks, we have already identified what they are and how they are produced. Now we're gonna talk about refining order blocks. Now, if you think about it from this perspective, right, when we find an order block, which is, say that this is an order block, right? Let me, actually, you know what? Let me use blue in this situation. Yeah, so say that this is the four hour order block. Now, we know that within this candle, within this order block, that there are several little candles. And what I mean by that is, we know that say on the 15 minute, we know that there's gonna be several other candles. Um, why is it not drawing a candle? We know there's gonna be several of these. Okay, and then you actually, I don't know why I did that. There we go. Before price pushes up again, and I'm going to do that one in a different color. Um, we'll do that in, uh, you know what, we'll do that in red. Okay, and then within that, so within the five minute time frame, for example. we have so within the five minute time frame we have this happening again right probably even more candles well there will be more candles what am i trying to say here so if we think about it for an order block for example for a bullish move we're going to be looking for the last bearish candle before the bullish move happens Right now, my blue candles are the bearish can are the bearish candles in this situation. I don't know why I've done that. I prob I'm probably confusing you. Let me make them grey so it matches my pictures. That I'm gonna matches my charts. I meant so. Um, okay, so we're seeing in this situation, and then these are gonna be blue candles for me to match the charts that I'll be showing you. So we know that within this four hour order block, we've got 15 minute candles and we've got five minute candles. Now, if you're gonna think about precisely where the last place they sold, we're gonna look inside this candle and try find the last place that the sell orders have been taking place. So the last place the sell orders have been taking place is this candle here. So that here, uh, that, is your order block so we have refined this this is going to be what a 108 pip order block we have refined that to a 29 pip order block right and that's essentially the process of refinement there's another way we can do this so say for example we have our candle that's sitting here and this is the four hour and then you have uh, say a a bullish candle okay and then say you have another bullish candle like that okay now this is all happening at your order block so we know that this is the order block candle okay so this this candle here is the four hour order block now we can mark this out now without going to a lower time frame we can simply find the range of the order block which is this and refine it to the next candle if it's within the range of the order block including the wicks so we can refine the order block without having to go down to a lower time frame okay same situation if you were um, same situation if you were like this so within that okay say within this situation say this is the five minute okay within this even if you get this situation where 
you have another candle. Doesn't matter if it's bullish or bearish. Okay. Say that this is the five minute time frame. We know that this, this gray candle here is the order block. We're going to keep going to the right until the candle breaks the range. Okay. We have this is the impulse. This is the last candle before the impulse actually occurs. And it's still within the order block range. So again, we've although we've refined the four hour order block to this one, within this candle we have this. Okay, and within this range we have this. So we have refined the order block without going through the different time frames because this will be an order block sitting on the one minute time frame regardless of whether it's bullish or bearish. So that's a quick way to refine it without having to go down to a lower time frame. Sometimes you get situations, for example, like this. So that is your order block, right? Okay, let me get rid of all of the drawings that are here. Okay, and I'll get rid of these ones. So that is your order block, okay, for this situation. But sometimes you get situations like this where you've got the impulse, you've got an order block that is sitting here, right? You can simply refine it down to the next candle without having to go down to a lower time frame. Simple as that, okay? You've got an order block where you have simple ones where it's actually the last bearish candle before the bullish move. Um, same thing like the last bearish candle before the bearish, last bullish candle before the bearish move. They're simple ones. But sometimes you get candles where you have an order block and then you have another candle, uh, like a, another candle in between, and then you have the bullish move. If it's within, say for example, if it's within this range of the order block, right, like this, you can simply refine that down to the next candle if it's within that range of the order block, right? So what I mean by that is, for example, we've got a break of structure here, right? So we've got the order block, which is this sitting, this one. The next candle before the impulse is going to be this one. So we can refine it to that one. That is now your order block without having to go down to a different time frame. Now, if we're going to talk about refinement, let's go to uh, GJ. So if you're going to talk about refinement, so we have this bullish, we have this bullish impulse, right? And we're going to try to locate the best OB. The best OB is essentially going to be the most extreme one, okay, because that's the last place that the institution sold, right? So this is our order block. Right, so we want to see where is the last point of, uh, where is the last place that the institutions have sold before the price continued to go up to the upside, okay? So all you can do is you can go down to your OB, it's probably best using the replay tool, and then go down the time frames. So you go down to four hour, it's still there, it's fine. Okay, look, we can refine it down to this one now. Okay, and then we can go even further. So we can go to the 45 minute. Nothing is different in that sense. Uh, nothing has changed. It's not really breaking the range. We want to find a nice um, clear one. So we're going to keep coming. We're going to keep going down the time frames, right, until you find a, oh, sorry, I've gone up there, until you find a clear OB within this range. Uh, again, you want to look for the most extreme point. Um, there's nothing clear for me. Let's go to the three minute, nothing, two minute, uh, nothing yet. Let's go to the one minute. Um nothing yet let's go 30 second okay so what can we see so if we zoom down within this what do we have we have a little order block right and this is within the higher time frame ob this order block is the last place that institutions have sold before price continued up and it's not been mitigated so this is the point of mitigation. Why did I not say that anything that is sitting on the one minute or two minute or even the five minute, why did I look at the extreme points and not not like them? 
Why? It's because none of these are clear. They have all been mitigated. I want to find a mitigated OB. So you want to think, where is the last place that institutions need to come to mitigate their order? Okay, now this 32nd OB that is sitting here has not been mitigated, right? It's not been mitigated because even though it's come close, but it's not actually tapped it out. Now, if we go back to the four hour, you can see what we refined it to. So we refined that four hour OB, right? We refined this four hour OB here. Oh gosh. We refined this all the way down to this. So we are expecting price to react of here before continuing to the upside. So if we go back to where we were, let's see what actually happens. So we broke structure, now we're looking for the OB. What did price do? It came back and it reacted at that 30 second OB precisely and then continued. It mitigated the order, right? And look how price reacted. Now that they mitigate the orders, they can happily continue their move, which is why it's so impulsively rejected off there. So that's the process of refinement. So when you refine an OB, so all you have to do is go down the time frames to find an OB that you are happy with, right? And now, there are order blocks sitting differently, right? You have order blocks either like this, but you also have order blocks within the wicks. So within a wick, right? So say this is a candle and then you get another candle like this. And then you have sometimes have candles with huge wicks and then you normally, you sometimes have candles with small wicks. What, what we can see here, right? So price, where's my brush? Uh, what we can tell by the wig is that the buyers are obviously pushing price up, but they get exhausted, which is why there's no body there, okay? Because the sellers are in control. What does that mean? It means that the seller, the selling pressure is within this wig, okay? The main thing you need to take away from what I'm saying here is there's an order block sitting at either the base or the 50%, okay, of this OB, of, of this candle. So say for example, um, say if that is your OB and that is the like, next impulsive move, if you have a wick, right, that it's surpassing the previous wick of your OB candle, you could take a trade you, or have your POI as the base of the wick or the 50%. It's completely up to you how you wish to do that, right? So if you see it from this perspective, um, I'll show you an example. Um, let me give you an example here, inside. So, on the five minute time frame. Right, what can we see? So, we have a break of structure here, impulsively broken. So, we, I, immediately we identify the OB which is sitting here. Now. This candle is within the range. It's not broken the range of the OB because these wicks, they haven't broken the range. It's not a candle body. And we'll speak about breaker structure in the next part. But it has not broken the range of this OB. So we can refine it down to the next candle. But if you look carefully, what do you see? We've got this wick is surpassing the previous one. What does that mean? The buyers are in control within this candle. So you can actually refine your OB to that wick itself. Where does price react? It reacts to that wick. Now for you to get trust in the fact that it's, you know, it's reacted to the wick and to, for you to give trust in reacting to OB, it will take practice, okay? But essentially that's the reason behind it because when you get a wick that is to the downside grabbing liquidity from the previous candle, all right, the buyers are in control. And what does that mean? That's where the buying pressure started, right? So the last place that institutions are sold is within this wick, right? So the sellers have been exhausted here, so they've been selling throughout this wick, 
and then the big buy happens. This whole move originated from within here. So their last sell position in theory is within here. Why is this liquidity wick not a POI? Because it didn't break structure. It didn't do anything significant for us to say that there's an OB sitting within that. But this one did. This one went on to produce a powerful move that broke one, two, three structures, right? So it needs to be mitigated. And that's where the mitigation play happened. And we could have taken a trade based off that. So I hope from this video, you've understood how to refine your OBs and how to identify them and how to identify them through multiple time frames and so on. And also how to identify a liquidity wick. It's the exact same thing going from, for example, the daily. Um, if you think about it from this perspective, where did the break of structure occur? So let me try find you a clear example. So from the daily perspective, sorry, there we go. So we have uh, we have broken structure here, right? So what can we see? We have broken st this structure here, and we've also broken this one. Where is the OB that broke the structure? This candle here, right? We can refine that down to this OB here. And then you can go down the time frames and then refine that down even further. So you can refine it down to this one. And then you can keep going down the time frames and refine that down even further until you find a candle which um, is clear and is an OB. So what we can see is this is the one that's not been mitigated and created a move, was part of that move that broke structure, right? Everything here is not clear. And this is only the 15 minute time frame. If you go back to the four hour, right, we can see, we could try and see where price actually reacted. Uh, I'm not sure if it reacted off that or not di directly. Yeah, so it reacted perfectly off that unmitigated OB, right? So that is, we have reduced that daily OB, which was, how big, how big was that? That daily OB was 147 pips. We have reduced it down to, to a nine pip range. And we can keep doing that until you feel comfortable. And we'll talk about how to actually use that in terms of entries in the next part. But for now, that is how to refine your order blocks.